Khalid, thank you so much for giving me your time today. Nice to catch up with you again. How have you been? Thank you. I'm very good. Thanks. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, last time we spoke, obviously, was back in uh, October for your fight. That was in November. You were supposed to to face Jack Shaw, but that got cancelled and, and then you had a new opponent. Um, talk a little bit about that run-up. Obviously, I hadn't caught up with you when there was a change of opponent. So what was that like when you when you first heard that that uh, fight was, you know, cancelled? Yeah, it, it was like... I, I, I felt that before, like, you know, all, all this COVID situation, it was like, um, even, even, even I wasn't sure to travel to the US because until I think eight days before the fight, I just got my visa. I, I just I just picked up my visa and from from the, the embassy I drove to the airport and took the flight to the US. So it was very, very crazy and uh, so yeah, it was like uh, kind of uh, we expected it a little bit. Yeah. So you got Hayoni uh, Barcelos uh, as an yeah. opponent. Uh, you know, well, what did you think when his name was put forward to you as a as a change of opponent, and and what kind of adjustments did you have to make? Yeah, I knew him before, and of course we knew that he was uh, a lot of uh, experienced, uh, um, a strong guy, good guy. Um, but but for us, it it doesn't matter. Of course, every time you change an oppo opponent, of course. Um, that quick it was like i think they told me eight days before the fight or nine days something like this uh, about the change and um it's always like uh, a little bit let's say uncomfortable but we were prepared prepared for everyone and everything and so we just took the fight because i was there to fight and uh, yeah and you had been out for for about a year, so you know you were dying to get back in there. What was it like yeah. to finally be able to to make that walk uh, to the octagon, having gone through all of that run up? Yeah, it was a little bit weird because it was um, my fight before that fight was in the at the biggest crowd ever in Australia, Melbourne, and then I fought without the crowd, and it was like. There was not not that feel, you know, and and my last fight was a fight of the night, so it was a very very crazy fight. Like I hit him, he hit me. It was like fifty minutes of war, and there was not that feeling like when the crowd sees a fight like that, they are getting crazy, you know. And if they get crazy, you get more crazy, and it's like the feeling wasn't that wasn't the same. It wasn't the same, no. Do you think? Uh... Do you think that fight may have gone any differently had there been a crowd? Do you think that would have made an impact for you in your in terms of your performance? Honestly, I'm sure if I had my brother in my corner, it would be different, 100 percent, because it was like it was such a hard, it it was a tough fight. Um, we didn't start like we wanted to start, and um, we had a game plan, and it 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 didn't work well. Like we had. To change it after the first one, and my brother is like, it's in such a tough fight. He's there to 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 wake me up, you know, to to not get too comfortable, not be too lazy. Maybe sometimes if you if you are a little bit tired, sometimes you you get a little bit lazy, maybe. And and he's there like, uh, I can't. Uh, he he kind of scares me to 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 get lazy or to stop or you know what I mean. And 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 I think. That was this little bit what I needed in this fight. Uh, yeah, what should I say? <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, it was. It was an absolutely amazing fight to watch. Thank you. Um, you know, when you when you look back at your perform performance, how do you assess it? I was. I, I I watched the fight a few times, of course. I. I was a little bit like. Um, I, it was a good fight, but I am sure I could do it much, much better. Um, the problem was we, we, that was the first time in my life, we focused too much on my opponent. We focused too much on what, what he's going to do. I was, I was fighting him 
not like I, I wasn't making the fight. You know what I mean? And and that's normally usually that, that's my character. I'm I'm taking the center. I'm making the fight. What it doesn't matter what happens. I'm gonna maybe it was because of the one year layoff because of uh, no crowd uh, the open and change i don't know but that was like what what i realized and uh, that was the biggest mistake and i will never ever do it again you know how did you feel going in there after having a year off do you believe in ring rust did did it feel any different for you no because it was like only one year it was it wasn't that long I, maybe after two years or something like that it's it's kind of ring rust like but, but one year is still okay because sometimes after a hard fight a tough fight you are out for six months then you have your preparation and then you're gonna fight maybe 10 11 after 10 or 11 months so it's kind of the same and, and in terms of you know moving forward into this fight have there been any adjustments or changes that you've made in in preparation you know to this fight in the lead up i trained a lot i trained a lot uh, but i i'm not honestly i'm not focused on him i'm not focused on his skills or uh, is he a wrestler is he a striker is he all around or whatever i just focused on myself i focused on getting better everywhere in the striking jiu jitsu and the wrestling and I'm going to beat him, whatever is going to happen, wherever the fight's going to happen, I'm going to beat him. And that's that's the main focus, what I'm at. Yeah. And, of course, there's been a, a big change in your life. Uh, you're now, a, you know, a father. Um, yeah. Which you didn't, obviously, I know you were... Your, you know, your wife was expecting last time. So this is the first time that you're going to be going into a fight as a dad. How has that impacted your life and has it made anything different for you in terms of getting ready for a fight and thinking about a fight? It, it's, it's just even, even, even better. It, it just feels, feels, it means more to me, you know what I mean? So, for example, I was uh, at the preparation. I, I was in a fight camp for three weeks in a big capital here in Frankfurt, in a big gym here in Germany and MMA Spirit. Um, I took my wife and my son with me. They stayed with me the whole three weeks, and uh, it was like after the morning session. For example, you are you are tired between the sessions, or or you wake up in the morning, everything hurts, and I see him like he's laughing, and he's you're always happy, you know. You you he, he gives me that energy, and and it's it's just an amazing feeling. Yeah, and and something else that was really nice that I saw is that you gifted your mother a car. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which was it was lovely a lovely moment between you both you know how how much did that mean to you to be able to give back like that it it, it means the world and, and that's not even one percent i could give her back what she gave me you know uh, but i just i'm just trying to give her a little bit back it's like uh, i'm in that position now to to say like um it's it's not that I took uh, 30, 40 Ks uh, uh, and bought a new car or whatever. It's just, it was my old car. It's it's a nice car, uh, I think. Um, and I took it, so it was like I bought a new car for myself. And, and instead of like uh, selling my car, I took it, uh, washed it, prepared everything and gave it just to my mom. And it was like, in, in, in my opinion, it was something very, very small that I, I could give her. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, and, you know, going into this fight, you're taking on a former M1 champion, Sergei Morozov. Uh, um, what did you think when his name was put forward to you? Um, my manager called me. He told me I'm going to fight Sergei Morozov. And I was like, uh, I heard this name before. Who was that? And then he told me he fought Umar Nurmagomedov. And then I remember because I watched that fight before, uh, but I couldn't really remember like who he was, how his fighting skills were. To be honest, between me and my manager, it's like um, he just sent me the date, the name, <laughs> the weight class, that's it. And and I'm always there. Like, um, and I was like, hey, yeah, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. Uh, we're going to do it. I was happy to, to uh, because that was the first time like I knew that I'm going to fight very early. Like he told me, I don't know, two months ago or something like that. So I had a long preparation. I had a long time like focusing, preparing everything. Yeah, and then I was sitting with my brother 
with my family. And then uh, we just started to watch the fight from Umar again, just to see a little bit like how he is. And uh, yeah. So what did you think of his performance? Obviously, he, you know, he, he came up short against uh, Omar Nurmagomedov. And I know you have a good relationship with Khabib as well. So, um, yes. you know, what did you think about Sergei's um, performance? I think he's, he's, he, he's tough. He's, he's, I, mean, I mean, you can't be the M1 champion uh, without being good, without being strong. He has a good record. Of course, Omar is uh, very, very... High te highly talented fighter. Um, he fought him in his debut. I what I realized was his takedown defense was was really good. He was like explosive, was sprawling very good. But I'm not gonna shoot on him, so <laughs> I don't care. We don't care. Um, I, I I I expect a good fight. So I mean, you know, obviously with him being submitted in this, I think it was the second round. It, you know, has that opened up? You know, some possibilities some you know have you seen some weaknesses there do you feel like you could take advantage of that or no honestly i don't prepare that i don't like plan these things i fought a jiu-jitsu black belt uh, bruno silva and i submitted him in the third round and before the fight i never ever like was thinking about to submit him like uh, uh, um, planning these things like i said i train jiu-jitsu a lot i train um wrestling strike i've trained everything i'm prepared everywhere and and i know if i'm gonna put pressure on him if i'm gonna hit him hard he has to wrestle he has to shoot he has to clinch he has to and and most of the time there are the things where you can get the submission or you can get the victory yeah so he's obviously going to be looking for his first win in the ufc um, you know, how Not do you... against me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think your advantages are in this fight? I think I'm, I'm, I'm physically, I'm stronger. Uh, my, my condition is like I'm, I'm going to run into him. I'm going to run through him 15 minutes. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit him everywhere. I'm going to hit him with everything I have. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch him. I'm going to kick him. I'm going to wrestle him. I'm gonna... I think I'm just too much for him. Yeah, and will you have your brother in your corner this time around? Yes, we. Um, he he he, sh he should be with me. We are honestly we are struggling struggling a little bit with the visa because Germany, the US, first time traveling, COVID. It's not that easy, but. We are planning to ha have him in my corner, yes. Yeah, how much will it mean for you to, to have him? Obviously, if it, if it all goes to plan, how much would it mean to you to have him in the corner there? It means everything to me because my brother and I, like we have old pictures. Uh, I was six years old. He was seven years old. We were, were our, our, our clothes, like the Taekwondo uh, um, suit, you know, we were training together our whole life. We, we were sharing one room together for more than uh, 15, 20 years, um, it means everything. Then, then to be in the biggest organization in the world with him together, traveling around the world, fighting the best guys in the world, having him, it's like, uh, it means everything because it feels like also I'm, I'm giving him something back, you know? Like all the cornering, all the coaching, all the training, all, all the things he has done for me, it's like the same with the car with my mom. I can't give her back what she gave me, but it's a little bit a nice feeling when I can give him that, that win, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And, and yeah. how do you imagine having your hand raised on July 17th? Honestly, I think I'm going to finish him earlier. <laughs> cool. Well, we really look forward to seeing you back in action again, July 17th. Thank you so much. Khalid, thank you so much for talking to me today. You're welcome. Thank you.